Hey folks, hope you're well, Zito here. So today I'm breaking down the two stoves that I own, which is the stainless steel G stove. It's a camping stove that's pretty lightweight versus a much heavier Vermont casting uh, cast iron Aspen stove. Honestly, they're both great in their own right. If I had a preference for my 100 square foot A-frame, honestly, the Vermont Castings Aspen is a, probably a better solution because it provides heat for a longer period of time, uh, frankly, allowing me to sleep at night. <laughs> I will break that down into much more detail, of course, and in this particular video, I actually want to talk about an experiment where I took both stoves to about 20 degrees Celsius and then just stopped feeding it any wood, uh, and after that, pretty much just let the stoves uh, do their own thing, where they heat it up a little bit more and then let them cool down to about 15 degrees Celsius. And I actually filmed a clock alongside a thermometer for both uh, stoves and came up with some interesting data, data that I hadn't actually seen before on the internet. So I'm gonna go ahead and break that down. But first of all, let's take a look at both stoves there. For the G stove, as I mentioned, it's actually much lighter. It's about 20.7 pounds. The length of the stove itself is 14.96 inches, so roughly 15 inches long, while the width of it is about 8.66 inches. Of course, the construction of stainless steel, it's great because this particular stove, you can honestly handle everything by yourself, and you can also bring it anywhere. So for outdoor cooking, like I cooked a pie on it outdoors, and it was fantastic for that. And also the accessories that come with it, some of the accessories are like the water boiler that goes wraps around the pipe and everything. It's just a great little system uh, that I've been using for almost the entire year. Of course, we're contrasting that with the Vermont Castings cast iron Aspen stove. Um, that particular stove is 240 pounds. It's about 16 inches wide, so roughly double what the G stove is itself. Uh, it has a length of 23 inches and actually has a max log length of 16 inches. So actually comparable uh, to the length what you were seeing with the G stove. It's made of cast iron and it's a beast. Honestly, you need at least two people to handle this thing. Uh, and all in all, it's 240 pounds. And actually the manufacturer's website provides a lot more info, like it has a heat capacity of up to 600 square feet. And generally speaking, it has burn time of about five hours. Now when you talk costs really quick too, the G-Stove, all in all, the entire system with piping and even accessories costs about $1,000 Canadian. Whereas the Vermont Castings Aspen itself, when you look at one of these new units brand new, they're about $1,700. And the piping alone uh, cost me roughly $500. So not as cheap of an option, coming in well over $2,000 to twice the price of what one of these G-Stoves would cost. So with the G stove, we found that it actually took about 40 minutes to raise the temperature from about three degrees up to 20 degrees. It was that for that particular day, it was three degrees both inside and outside. And from there, we actually saw the temperature hit 30 degrees Celsius after we stopped feeding the fire. And then from there, it actually took it about three hours from start to finish before we saw the temperatures hit about 15 degrees Celsius and it was almost too dark to actually see the uh, picture of the thermometer and clock furthermore. So at about 15 degrees is when I'd probably want to add more wood to the fire and such. So yeah, we pretty much saw that it took about three hours to reach that point. Now, after having switched out the G-Stove, uh, taken out all the piping, added new piping, adding a whole new insulation for the Vermont Castings Aspen, I was pretty pumped about firing this thing up and seeing what it could provide. In a similar vein there, what we saw was that it took, actually took about an hour 40 to reach 20 degrees Celsius, when the outside temperature was roughly minus seven degrees or so, and the indoor temperature was roughly minus three degrees Celsius. After taking an hour and 40 minutes to reach a 20 degrees Celsius, we actually saw that it went up to about 30 degrees Celsius. It sustained that heat for much longer than the G-Stove actually did. And all in all, it actually took it about six and a half seven hours for it to then get back down to 15 degrees Celsius. We're at about 6.30, 6.30 and we're still hovering around 17, 18 degrees. Going to cut the experiment off now. So we're almost seeing well over double the amount of time for uh, the Vermont castings to actually reach 15 degrees Celsius versus the G-Stove, which was uh, roughly three hours there. But yeah, generally speaking, I would probably recommend the Vermont Castings Aspen if you have the money, if you have friends around you that can help you move this stove around, and if you can find a great deal. I got my Vermont Castings Aspen for free, which is amazing. But the G-Stove is also a great little tool for something like this. If I had to do it all over again, I probably would have skipped it and gone right to the Vermont Castings Aspen if I could have. 
but uh, there's definitely applications for it and it's fantastic. I know when I was first picking up a stove for this 100 square foot R20 insulated space, I honestly didn't see much or didn't know much about what to pick. A bunch of Instagrammers were posting about cheese stoves, so I bought that and it was honestly served me very well. But at the same time, I really honestly wasn't getting much sleep. Having to either stoke, add to, or restart a fire every few hours. There's definitely a place for both the G-Stove and the Vermont Castings Aspen. They're both great products. Uh, but for me, the Vermont Castings Aspen is definitely a welcome solution. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty pumped on it. So thanks a lot for checking this out. And good luck with picking out stoves and everything. And yeah, more to come. Peace.